This is Canto 13 from the Divine Comedy Purgatorio, translated by John Ciardi. The Whip of Envy We climbed the stairs and stood now on the track where, for a second time, the mount that heals all who ascend it had been terraced back. The terrace circles the entire ascent in much the same way as the one below, save that the arc cuts it sooner bent. There were no spirits and no carvings there. Bare was the cliff face, bare the level path. The rock of both was livid, dark and bare. Were we to wait till someone came this way who might direct us? Virgil said to me, I fear that would involve a long delay. Then he looked up and stared straight at the sun. And then using his right side as a pivot, he swung his left around, then he moved on. O oh, blessed lamp, we face the road ahead, placing our faith in you. Lead us the way that we should go in this new place, he said. You are the warmth of the world, you are its light. If other cause do not urge otherwise, your rays alone should serve to lead us right. We moved on with a will, and in a while we had already gone so far up there as would be reckoned here on earth a mile. When we began to hear in the air above invisible spirits who flew toward us speaking sweet invitations to the feast of love. The first voice that flew past rang to the sky, Venum non habent. They don't have wine? I think that's what that means. Venum non habent. And from far behind us, we heard it fade, repeating the same, the, the same cry. Even before we heard it cry its last, far around the slope, another voice rang out, I am Orestes, and it too sped past. Sweet father, I began, what are these cries? And even as I asked, I heard a third bodiless voice say, Love your enemies. And my good master, then, this circle purges the guilt of envious spirits, and for these who failed in love, love is the lash that, scour that scourges. The rain must cry the opposite of love. You will hear it, I expect, before you reach the pass of absolution that leads above. But now look carefully across the air ahead of us, and you will see some people seated against the inner cliff up there. I opened my eyes wider. Further on, I saw a group of spirits dressed in cloaks, exactly, exactly the same color as the stone. As we drew nearer, I heard prayers and plaints. Oh, Mary, pray for us, I heard them cry and to Michael, and to Peter, and all saints. I cannot think there walks the earth today a man so hard that he would not be moved by what I saw next on that ashen way. For when I drew near, and could see the whole penance imposed upon those praying people, my eyes milked a great anguish from my soul. Their cloaks were made of haircloth, coarse and stiff. Each soul supported another with his shoulder, and all leaned for support against the cliff. The impoverished blind who sit all in a row during indulgences to beg their bread lean with their heads together exactly so, the better to win the pity they beseech, not only with their cries, but with their look of fainting grief which pleads as loud as speech. Just as the sun does not reach to their sight, so to those shades of which I spoke just now, God's rays refuse to offer their delight. For each soul has its eyelids pierced and sewn with iron wires, as men so new caught falcons, sealing their eyes to make them settle down. Somehow, it seemed to me a shameful act to stare at others and remain unseen. I turned to Virgil. He, with perfect tact, knew what the mute was laboring to say and did not wait my question. Speak, he said, but count your words and see they do not stray. Virgil was walking by me down the ledge on the side from which, because no parapet circled the cliff, one might plunge off the edge. On the other side, those spirits kept their places absorbed in prayer, while though the ghastly stitches tears, while through the ghastly stitches, tears forced their way and flowed down from their faces. I turned to them and said, O oh, souls of fire with hope of seeing with hope of seeing heaven's light, and thus already certain of your heart's desire. So may high grace soon wash away the scum that clogs your consciences, that, clo that clogs your consciousness, that memory's stream may flow without a stain in joys to come. Tell me if there is any Latin soul among you here. I dearly wish to know, and telling me may help him to his goal. 
We are all citizens of one sublime and final city brother, you mean to ask, who lived in Italy in his pilgrim time. These are the words I heard a spirit say from somewhere further on. I moved up, therefore, in order to direct my voice that way. I saw one shade who seemed to have in mind what I had said. How could I tell? She sat, chin raised, the waiting gesture of the blind. Oh, soul, self-humbled for the climb to grace, I said. If it was you who spoke, I beg you, make yourself known either by name or place. I was Sammy's, she answered. On the shelf I weep away my world guilt with these others in prayers to him that he vouchsafe himself. Sapia I was, Sapia was I, though, the, though sapient I was not. I found more joy in the bad luck of others than in the good that fell to my own lot. If this confession rings false to your ears, hear my tale out. Then see if I was mad in the descending arc of my own years. The blood of my own land was being spilled in battle outside Kali's walls, and I prayed to God to do, to do what he already willed. So were they turned, their forces overthrown, to the bitter paths of flight, and as I watched I felt such joy as I had never known. Such that I raised my face, flushed with false power, and screamed to God, Now I no longer fear you, like a blackbird when the sun comes out an hour. Not till my final hour had all but set did I turn back to God, longing for peace. Penance would not yet have reduced my debt, had not Pierre Petinayo, in saintly love, grieved for my soul and offered holy prayers that interceded for me there above. But who are you that you have come here to seek such news of us, and to have your eyes unsown as I believe, and breathe yet when you speak? Oh, and have your eyes unsown as I believe, and breathe yet when you speak. My eyes, I said, will yet be taken from me upon this ledge, but not for very long. Little they sinned through being turned in envy. My soul is gripped by a far greater fear of the torment here below, for even now I seem to feel the burden those souls bear. And she, then who has led you to this round, if you think to go below again? And I, he who is with me and makes no sound, and I still live, if you would have me move my mortal feet down there in your behalf, ask what you will, O soul blessed by God's love. Oh, she replied, this is a thing so rare it surely means that God has loved you greatly. From time to time, then, help me with a prayer. I beg by all you most desire to win. I beg by all you most desire to win that if you walk again on Tuscan soil, you will restore my name among my kin. You will find them in that foolish mob whose dream is Talamon now, and who will lose their more than they did once in their s silly scheme to find the lost Diana though on that coast it is the admirals who will lose the most.